In this example, we're going to find three positive numbers. Let's say they are x, y, and z, whose sum is 45 and the product is a minimum. So this is a type of optimization problem. Um, for this example, we're going to use what's called Lagrange multipliers. Okay. So let's first define uh, what we want to minimize. Okay. So here in this case, we want to minimize the uh, the product of these three numbers. Okay. So that's this part. Okay. So I'll let that be equal to m. So we're going to have m is equal to x times y times z and then we're going to and we have a constraint here who's the sum the sum of those three numbers must be 45 okay so that's going to be x plus y plus z equals to 45 okay all right so we want to minimize this Okay, that's our primary equation with respect to our constraint. Okay, so so for working with Lagrange multipliers, what we need to do is we need to establish uh, two functions. One function will be for the uh, constraint. The other function will be for the primary equation. Okay, and then we're going to take the we need to take the difference between those with so it'll be f so it'll be a function minus some constant times the second part of the function okay and then so from here okay we're going to have all right so we're going to define our functions okay so we're going to let f the fun, we're going to let the function of x y z be equal to the product of x y and z okay and then we're going to let g, which will be a function of x, y, z, be equal to the difference. Uh, well, it's going to be, in this case, x plus y plus z minus 45. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take the difference with respect to a scalar. That scalar is a Lagrange multiplier. Okay, so our function, okay, so our new function is going to be x, y, z, and lambda. So it's going to be f of x, y, z, okay, minus lambda times g. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this expression. Okay, we're going to write this out, simplify it, and then take the partials. Okay, and then set each of those partials equal to zero, and that will give us the, the values for x, y, and z. Okay, so we're going to have, okay, so we're going to have x times y times z minus lambda times x plus y plus z minus 45. Okay, so this is going to be x, y, z minus lambda x minus lambda y minus lambda z plus 45 lambda okay so this this is what we want to uh, we want to take our partials now okay all right so we're going to take the parcel with respect to x okay so that means we're going to fix all the other variables are going to be treated as constant and then x will be treated as a variable okay so that's going to be this part Okay, so we're going to look at this part with x and this one with x. All the others will be zero because there's no x values in those. So that means we're going to get yz, okay, minus lambda. Okay, so now let's take the partial with respect to y. So that's this part and this one, and that's it. So that means we're going to get, uh, so treating y as a as a variable and the others are constant, we're going to get xz and then minus lambda. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take um, the partial of f with respect to z. So that's this one and this part. Okay. So that's going to give us 
So again, we're going to treat z as the variable and the other terms as uh, the other values, the other variables as constant. So we're going to get x y minus lambda. Okay. Okay. So now we need to take the partial of f with respect to lambda now. Okay. So that's going to be this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. So the first, the first one, x, y, z, there's no lambda in there. So that's going to be zero. Okay. So we're going to get minus x minus y minus z plus 45. Okay. So now those are our partials. So the, from here, we need to set these partials, right? We're going to set these derivatives equal to zero. And then from there, uh, we have our system. We have some system equations that we can solve for, uh, for finding x, y, and z. Okay. So for the first one, okay, um, we can use the first one to find lambda. Okay. And then we can substitute lambda into the, to the other equations. Okay. So setting this equal to zero, So that means from here, lambda is going to be equal to yz, okay? So going to the second one, okay? So that means since lambda is yz, that means for this, we have xz minus yz equals to zero, okay? So from here, we can go ahead and, uh, uh, let's see, we can go ahead and factor out the z, okay? So we have x minus y equals to zero. So let's leave that as it is for the moment. Okay. And then from here we can fact, uh, we can, sorry, we can um, go ahead and substitute lambda. So we're going to get x times y minus yz equals to zero. Okay. And we can go ahead and factor out y. So that's going to leave us with x uh, minus, let's see, x minus. Let's see, let me make sure I got that correct. X minus Z, yeah, equals to zero, yeah. Okay. All right, so now, um, so now what we can do is, so let's look at, let's look at these equations here. Let's look at these two, okay. So from the first one, okay, we know that we have right, Z, times x minus y equals to zero. So that means, right, uh, z is zero, okay, z is equal to zero, or, okay, x minus y equal to zero. Okay. Which means that x is equal to y. So here we don't want uh, uh, we don't want to look at the case where z is zero because in our assumption we have that that they have to be positive numbers, okay. So then we're going to look at the second part. So that's going to be x equals to y, okay. So now let's look at the second equation. So we have y times x minus z equals to zero. So again, y is equal to zero or Right, we have x minus z equal to zero. So that means x is equal to z. Okay. So again, y can be zero, okay, because we want it to be a natural number. Okay. So we have these two now. We have x equals y and x equals z. Okay. So now we can use uh, we can use the partial with respect to lambda to solve for our equation. Okay. So looking at okay, let's look at the third equation here. Okay, so we have that the partial respect to lambda, we had what, minus x minus y minus z plus 45. So since x is equal to y and x is equal to z, so that means we're going to have, okay, we can substitute in for y and z. So we're going to minus x 
Okay, minus x, and z is x, so it's going to be minus x plus 45. And we're going to take this partial, and remember, set it equal to 0. Okay. So therefore, we have minus 3x plus 45 equal to 0. Okay. So we have... So that means that x must be equal to 15. Okay. All right. So if x is 15, that means y is 15 and z is 15. Okay. So therefore, we have that Oops. Okay, so it's x is equal to y and x equals z, then that means y, right, y is 15 and z is 15. Okay, so we found our solution. Okay, so x and x, y, and z is equal to 15. Okay, all right, so therefore, okay, we can. All right, so therefore that's our that's our three values, okay? So it's 15, 15, and 15. Okay, so that's our solution. Okay, those are the uh, three numbers, three positive numbers whose sum is 45 and the product is a minimal, okay?